Welcome to the orientation session for quality assurance for the Drupal.org D7 upgrade. I'm Melissa Anderson, um, so known, I guess, for lending a hand with the Git migration, which is kind of how I got started on all of this QA work. And Neil Drum is here with me as well, who's the tech lead and project manager for the second phase of the upgrade. Neil, did you want to introduce yourself? Uh, sure. Uh, so, yeah, I've been project managing and also doing a lot of the implementation for the upgrade. Sweet. So I got involved in Drupal.org, like I said, with the Git migration. And during that process and getting ready for its deployment, we did a lot of manual click testing to make sure that all of the functionality of just the Git section of the site was, was working as expected. And so it was out of that that I became passionate about automated user testing. Um, so we're using tools called Behat and Mink to check the site and let us know how we're progressing. We started the process by working with some developers from Capgemini. So we, the company donated um, three full-time developers for six months to work on a project and they ended up landing on this one. So what we did was look at the way that the Drupal 6 site works and try to describe what is supposed to happen with all of the features on Drupal.org, which is a huge undertaking um, and it's not documented anywhere. So that just discovering what the site does in all of its detail was a big part of the work that we did and then taking the tests that we wrote and automated against that and moving them to D7. You know, people are really excited to find out when the upgrade is going to launch, and Neil can talk more about that later, um, but my feeling is that it's going to be really soon. There are logistical and scheduling issues, and so the point of this is to let you know why we think it's ready and um, what the process will be once we open it up for community testing. So the, the tests that we wrote are organized into 15 major feature sets. There might be 16 of them now, I haven't counted lately. Um, and this is how I'm keeping track of progress for the upgrade. So anything here in the issue queue that is postponed means that there are open issues for it that we're waiting for a fix from Neil or someone else who's working on it. So for example, if I click in here, there's just three tests that are all failing because of a single issue and that's a open so that's very close and that's the case with most of the things in the postponed state that there's a couple of tests and a couple of issues out and some of them like with releases we're just looking at uh, needing to rename a field uh, so feel very close even on the ones with open issues when I put them in the needs work state like project in its case, that means that there's a test, that the test is bad and I know it, and it hasn't been updated to D7, so that's outstanding, and that lets me know that they're not in sync yet, as well as, in this case, a couple of issues with project, but again, nothing hugely significant from the automated testing standpoint. This big swath of green is the RTBC set of tests, and that means that on a regular basis, if there's no problem with network connectivity, which can interrupt tests sometimes, these are passing. So for example, you can see the planet issue, they pass regularly. You can even get in here to the folder and take a look at what's happening. So here, um, these are all collapsible. The tests are written in human readable language, so it's actually possible to follow the steps for the most part just from the interface. Occasionally, you need to look at the code that supports the automation, but this will tell you what's being tested automatically. So all of these steps here. The testing is taking place on Git 7 site. So it's git 7 sitedevdrupalorg and that's noted on the issue queue, which is the primary place for community QA to get involved. All of these links are collected there. So the um, HD access is Drupal and Drupal, and it says it on the issue queue, and it says it on the little pop-up window, and that's to keep robots out. You can log in with your regular username and password. It's all HTTPS, and you can do the things that you would normally do on Drupal.org. And that's a question that people sometimes have, like, where should I start testing something as big as Drupal.org? And clicking around just to see what you can find is great, but it's also really important to have you get involved um, 
with the things that you care about that you would notice if they broke and that are important to you and making sure that they work the way that you actually use them. So the hope is that having these automated tests will make the process smoother for the community as they get involved in QA. Hopefully we've been able to find a lot and resolve a lot of issues before, before you even join us. So the staging server gets rebuilt daily and I was going to let Neil talk a little bit about the schedule for that and the process of migrating yeah, the database. Uh, yeah, so uh, the site, uh, as you can see in the red bar at the top, is rebuilt uh, every day. Uh, and that's just so we get uh, back to having no one set uh, data uh, for, for the site. And back to, uh, you'll actually see new issues and forum posts and everything coming in from production. Uh, and uh, Behind that, uh, the actual upgrade process is run uh, three times a week, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday. Um, it, it actually takes a little bit more than a day to run through the entire upgrade script and uh, make a database snapshot of that. So you'll see uh, uh, the data from production lags by three or four days uh, altogether, uh, sometimes longer. If uh, the upgrade fails, of course, we have to uh, you know, start over, and I'll take another two days. Uh, so yeah, what you should, you should see on this site is uh, you know, new data coming in. And we're doing this so we test uh, everything a lot uh, with the upgrade process. Yeah, that's really similar what we to what we did when we did the Git migration as well, trying to rebuild on a daily basis so that we know that the process for the day that the the deployment happens has been tested many many times. Uh, and in general, uh, everything that uh, all issues that get fixed uh, should show up uh, on the site uh, fairly quickly uh, once we merge something to VCR, you might uh, see us say that in uh, the issue queue. Uh, that'll show up on the site within about uh, five minutes. Uh, you know, of course, sometimes uh, automation doesn't uh, pick up everything exactly right, so uh, if it doesn't look good, uh, you know, let us know in the issue queue. Uh, and also, uh, the, the exception to that is anything changing a um, migration that's already happened, uh, that, of course, will need a full upgrade. Um, but usually, uh, we add new update functions, and those will go ahead and run on deploy here. So those will also, any new upgrade functions will show up here within five minutes. So you do deployments of code as you're working throughout the day, so functionality may change um, at, that, at that level, but the database functionality doesn't change except for once a day. Right. Yeah. So Neil just mentioned the issue queue, and that's kind of a, a fun segue into the only major change in functionality, and I think it's, I'm, I'm pretty excited about it, is the way that the issue queue works. So it's becoming a little bit more like other bug tracking and issue tracking software and solving some of the issues with um, how you change the status of the issue queue. So there's a document here and it is linked to in the QA queue as well. This, is, this describes all of the ways that it's expected to work and I'll do a brief demonstration of that just so that you know how we think it should be happening. So if I create a new issue on Git 7 site, it looks pretty much like the old create issue. And I can do a demonstration of the new issue functionality. So we've got some selected fields. We'll call it code. And we'll call it a bug report. And once I click Save, that's where you'll start to see 
the, the big difference here. Um, so instead of having all of the issue status fields attached to the comment like they are on the current site, and you can see an example of the way the current site is now. The comment isn't just a comment box, it's change the title of the whole issue and change all of the settings. So if you come over here, it's now just a comment field. And you can press save and it shows up below the issue. So I left the body blank, but if I wanted to update the issue, there's now a great big green button that makes it really clear that this is what's supposed to be happening. So I can set the status here and make changes. And one of the exciting pieces is that we will also be getting the opportunity to um, relate issues to each other. So in the issue relations, if there's a meta issue and you want a bunch of child issues, we're going to have functionality for that too. And again, the details are described in the document. And then you can comment when you make the change in the status why you're doing it. So we'll change it from bug report to task. Save it. And now we've got the updated information over here. Um, and we still have a comment, and we have the ability to look at the changes, so what was different um, at the time. So you can see when the change was done in the stream of comments, but you keep the data with the node itself. And then one of the other features that, and I think this might be the one I'm most excited about, I don't, I don't know for sure. Um, yeah, there it is, is the upload new file functionality. So it's right there with the issue. And you can comment this illustrates. So patches or screencasts or whatever you're going to, um, or screen captures, whatever you're going to use to explain the comment that you make, are being gathered at the top with the issue in order, and they're linked to the comment down below, and you can also find them linked in the comments, so it'll make it a little easier on those very long issues that are that are going to be out there. So as you're looking at the issue queue and you're curious if it's working right, again, that document um, is pretty detailed about the issue queue changes and you'll get a chance to look at it and get comfortable with it. So the exact time for opening up for community QA is really a balance um, between moving things forward in a timely fashion as well as getting as many issues that we already know about fixed as possible so that we don't get a lot of duplicates. And it'll ultimate, ultimately be Neil's call when we decide to open that um, right now you can see the list of confirmed or known issues and this link will be available on the QA issue queue as well. So there's a lot of green in here, but you can see there's still a handful of issues to be addressed. So it'll be his call on when he thinks he's ready to start getting community input relative to fixing those. It's good to be aware also of the deferred issues. So this is functionality that um, isn't going to be implemented until after the big deployment. So there are things that are delayed and you can find them here tagged with drupal.org 7.1. So when you get ready, you've clicked around, you found an issue and you're getting set to report it, it's really helpful, important to do your best to look, and I have a link where you can search both the known and the deferred issues, to look for the issue before you file the bug report, so there will be lots of people looking at it and we want to keep the noise of duplicates to a minimum, so we really appreciate that searching. Um, but when you found something after you search, you can go to the project slash d7qa, so this is the queue where we're going to keep all of the community reported bugs. You've done your searching, you create a new report, 
there's a little bit of templating done here for you. It's in the category of miscellaneous. It's hard to really judge which of the components it is, so you don't need to worry too much about the component. Um, but getting the bug report is already pre-filled. Normal priority is fine if you don't know what to set it to. And then what we're looking for is if you saw it on a page, do put the URL in, like cut and paste where you saw it. That is one of the most helpful things that you can do. So for example, I might want to open an issue about seeing the error message at the top of adding a new issue. So I would go back for that. Let's see, I'll get in there. And just create that so I can recreate the find the existing piece. I don't see it now. So Neil, do you have any idea what is up with the error message that we saw when I was clicking through earlier? Uh, that one looks like it was part of the uh email notification code. Uh, so that came up uh, as the site was actually sending out the email notification. Um, OK. And you can get those uh, issue notifications and any other email this site uh, sends out if you go to uh, your user account and fill in a real email address. Uh, you know, since this is real Drupal.org data, we sanitize out uh, everyone's email addresses and so we don't accidentally send people emails. So feel free to update existing issues on you know, Drupal core or whatever project, uh, whatever modules and themes you want. Uh, and if your user account on this site uh, is updated with your email address, you'll get that. Um, and you know, of course, that will be reset uh, overnight or wh whenever that time is uh, in your time zone. Uh, and yeah, I saw that that issue, and that's something having to do with uh, that notification going out. Uh, so yeah, copy and paste their messages. Uh, that's also really helpful. Yeah, that's what I was going to go demonstrate actually, but it is just as good a point that I'm now not sure how to reproduce the error message that I saw, and unless I can reproduce it, I'm not going to open an issue about it. Um, Reproducibility is really important. So as you're working through things, pay attention to the steps that you're taking because it's we have to have a way to, to see the problem in order to fix the problem. So if I were opening that issue, I would paste it in the full link to where I saw it. It is possible that the data, because it gets reset every day, that this link might not be good tomorrow because it's test data that isn't getting imported from Drupal.org. So then explaining the problem. So this is where you paste the actual text of the error message if you saw it, um, cut and paste it in so that it's in the issue. It's really helpful for developers. And then the steps to reproduce. So. Um, it's helpful to know what user account you're logged in as because sometimes they're related to permissions. So if you just say, like, I test with some fake users, but if I was logged in as myself, when I go to, and I try to paste URLs whenever possible so that it's easy and people don't have to, who are trying to reproduce the bug or the developers, they don't actually have to go click through. So we might have seen it on one page, but when I go here, and actually I would have been to node add. So anyway, put in that part um, and I create a new message. Create that's not yeah. A new issue. I get the text above. So a specific issue can be getting people to be able to reproduce the issue and then when you're all done, save it. And I like to keep the titles in a subject verb kind of um, a, sh a short, concise way of explaining in regular language what the problem is. Something short like that um, with the rest of it in the body so that it's easier to scan through the issues. But everybody has their own style for that for sure. So anyway, 
after you create it and you save it. That issue is out there for other people to look in the QA queue to see if it's an existing issue as well. Um, if you need to, you can annotate the screenshot. If you're pasting in the error message, it's not likely that you'd need to do that, but it's very, very helpful, um, the circles and arrows of where to pay attention to a problem if it's subtle. So once you get that open, then there's also a second step. So in order to keep the developers as focused on possi as possible on fixing the issues so that we can keep things moving along, if you're not sure what to test but you want to lend a hand, you can verify the reports. So a lot of communities do this. When someone reports a bug, there's either somebody with the organization or a community member who come in and reproduce the bug and say, yeah, this is worth spending developer time on. We're going to have them take a look. So you don't even have to necessarily open issues of your own. You can go to issues and see if you're able to reproduce the bug that was reported. And if you are able to reproduce it and you change the issue status from active to needs review, the reviewed issues are the ones that will get the developer's attention. So if you were able to reproduce it, the bug report was clear, great. If you feel like you can add more information from your experience, feel free to edit the issue. If you can't reproduce the issue, it's helpful to comment on it and explain where you got lost so that the person who or originally opened it has an opportunity to see or to explain and clarify so that we can do more with the issue itself. And then finally, when it's in that needs review state, then it will go into the into the queue for the developers, and when the fix comes out, we'll be able to verify those and get them marked as closed. And so that'll be the basic process of working through uh, QA as we get ready to deploy. Neil, did you have anything that you wanted to add to that? Uh, I can't think of anything right now. Can you talk a little bit about the considerations that affect choosing the actual deployment date? Uh, yeah, for deployment, uh, you know, the, we have a couple of big things left uh, as far as uh, performance testing and performance improvement. Um, and so I don't think we'll be able to fit deployment uh, in. Uh, it would be nice to, but we just, you know, you don't want to rush through something. Uh, uh, before you get on an airplane. Uh, so we're, we're going to look at scheduling the deployment uh, sometime after DrupalCon Prague, uh, hopefully within a short, like within a month after that. Uh, and yeah, of course, they'll have a, a lot of factors to go into uh, planning that. You know, try not to do it during any big Drupal camps or anything. Of course, the upgrade itself will come with a, a bit of downtime. Uh, you know, it takes uh, about a day to run the upgrade um, on our staging site. Uh, the production server will be quite a quite a bit faster, but uh, yes, yeah, still going to be a significant downtime. Yeah, and I had one thing in my notes that I forgot to do, which makes me sad because I'm super excited to thank the folks at QED42. They've uh, taken one of the folks who work for them. Her online handle is Rocky. Um, and you'll find her in the issue queue four hours a day. Um, they've donated while we're doing the community QA process. She's been helping a lot with the automated testing already, going through and making sure that the tests are really doing what they say they're doing. And she will be verifying bug reports as well. So as the community stuff comes in, she's going to go through and look for steps to reproduce um, so that we can move things along to developers. And I think that's going to be a huge bonus. Um, and I cannot thank them enough for the time that they've been help, uh, given to us for keeping the, the testing process going. Um, so yeah, big shout out to QED42. Um, the last thing that I wanted to mention, um, where should people look for the opening, Neil, as far as having the community come in and start doing QA? Do you think you're ready for that this week or next week? Uh, I think. Probably next week. Uh, I want to get that open as soon as possible. Um, 
yeah, this week, uh, it's August 29th when it's being recorded. Um, there's too much going on this week. So yeah, we'll talk about it on Monday and it should be open sometime next week, I think. And where should people look for the announcement? Uh, the association blog. Uh, Tatiana has been doing um, a general update posts there. Okay, and I'll make sure that we get a posting out to the Drupal.org improvements group as well. Yep. So that people will have a clear idea and I'm sure it will be tweeted about. And I want to also give a huge shout out to everybody who's watching this, thinking about um, giving a hand with making sure that we have a quality deployment. Um, it's so important to have people looking for things that the automated tests can't catch. And they definitely cannot catch all of the subtle issues that experienced Drupal.org users will see. So thank you all very much. And if you're interested in the process of QA, I just want to do a little plug for the core conversation. If you're going to be in Prague, and you want to talk about um, how to take care of this place that we call home from a very logistical level, um, consider checking that out.